Hello, and welcome to the next part in our series, where this time we'll begin working on the uh, back portion here, and I don't believe that we'll be modeling the, uh, you know, small cockpit in person here. That'll be, uh, not in this tutorial series, but we will make the back part here. So, uh, when I was going through this, I noticed uh, one immediate error with this, and I'm just going to select everything with A, hit M, and move all of this to the first layer here just to keep it a bit cleaner. And then we'll go on the second layer and we'll begin working on this. Now, don't worry about sizing it correctly to the thrusters yet. We'll do that just later. So, Shift S, cursor to center. Shift A and we'll make a bezier curve. And we're going to do this exactly like how we did um, the original uh, top of the thrusters. So, we'll rotate it a negative 90. And then we'll scale it on the x-axis a negative 1. Because we're almost going for the same, almost kind of backwards heart shape in the back. So let's also go into our Bezier curve settings and make resolution about 3 for now. Then we will subdivide this once. And make this uh, flatter. Splay it out some. Then in the back I actually want it to be... Uh, a bit on the flat side. So let's set that up. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Just shape it a little bit more here. That looks pretty good to me. And then we just take this one and we just push it up some. As you can see, that's how we're going to get that shape to come in. So now we just take this, Shift D, hold Control and move it up one. And scale it in on the x axis and then scale it down on the z axis a bit. And shift D that, control, and move it down one. And we will also want to scale this one. Mm, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to scale. I want to take this one and just move it back some, these two, to make it uh, come up to a point. And same on here. But I want the entire back to be flush. Alright, so select them all, hit Control J, and then uh, it's all one curve, and then we will select that and hit Alt C, mesh from curve. <coughs> now if we go in, you can see we can select all the vertices. So we just go through and we fill in all these again. Uh, and the nice thing about this method though is that they've all lined up uh, really nicely using, uh, using the exact same curve multiple times. So it's a little bit monotonous, but nothing too bad. Then we select everything, go to fill holes, and there we go. It's pretty good. Now we can go into our modifier section and add our mirror modifier. And of course it's a bit weird because of the way we got our curve set up initially. Just like that, make sure clipping is enabled. Now I can go back into tab mode, grab these vertices here, extrude them, and then just drag them to the center. Alright, so that's kind of starting to take shape here. Uh, and then we want to connect up the bottom, so we'll just bridge this gap here. And then I think that we'll also bridge this one. And then fill in this new, newly created large square here. With the F key. And then we have to make those vertices line up with the bottom. So there are one, two, three, four it has to line up with. So we will go control R and make a loop cut. Make one, two, three, four of them. And then we can, again, just connect all of our vertices here. Looks like uh, I don't need this one. So if you don't need it, you, you can go to Dissolve Edges. Oop, no, we want Dissolve Vertices. And then just reconnect everything. Mm, shoot, we need it like that, don't we? So we can subdivide this one. And here we go. Get that to line up, and then we can get this square to line up. Nice. So you want to avoid triangles if possible. Uh, squares just seem to work better for geometry all around. 
and there we have the bottom. And then we will do the exact same thing on the top here. So bridge that gap. Make sure you have the correct vertices lined up. Once again, fill this. We have one, two, three, four. Two, three. There we go. And we can just fill in all of these here. And uh, I think I will get rid of this one again, dissolve vertices, and just have a triangle here in the back. Yes, so there we go. Now you can see that shape starting to uh, really come in here. So we also have this back part that comes up. So the best way to do that is to just take this. Uh, I put a loop cut here because I want some back there to put like a thruster on. Take these two, extrude them up through your side view. I like to slant it a bit, move it down. And then we have to get these um, solid here. So uh, select it, S, Z, zero. Oop, we have to do this with vertices. Mm, shoot. Okay, so I want this vertice to be in line with this one. So uh, go to your front view. Oh, they're in line. Never mind. From orthographic perspective. Uh, so shift S cursor to selected, and then make period uh, 3D cursor pivot point S Z zero. And I guess it's just perspective here. So you would do the same thing to all of them. Hmm, that's really weird. Does not look right. So I'm actually going to make it like that some. Ah, it's because this front bit is not flat. So we can do the same thing here. Make that the medium point, S, Y, 0. There we go. <coughs> now we can get everything flat. And then I think I'll do the same thing on these side faces, S, X, 0, to make them all flush as well. And then I would like to add in a loop cut across the top, and then drag these ones down here. Just add a bit of beveling, and just bring that down some. So here we have uh, the basic shape that we want. We'll go on to, uh, we'll just get the basics of how we want the dome to line up. So actually, this needs to just be a bit wider here. And we'll widen that up some. And then for the dome, I just like to connect some of these points. And which one does this guy do? Here, here, here. Fill in that, fill in that. And then we can fill in this here. Alright, so then we want to take all of those faces that we just created, select them, hit the Y key, and now it split them from the rest of the mesh. So now we can edit them without editing the geometry of the inside of the car. So we can go through and we'll add in some loop cuts grab those front edges that just were just created by the loop cuts right here and then we will just bevel them out some and then I don't want this to come up to the front exactly and then of course on the sides here we want these to come over some so grab these three that we just created and push it out some to make it look dome shaped and then over here we have this issue. So I'm just going to look at it for a moment. Um, control Shift H. Then we will just extrude this one vertice here, move it in, move it back. And then we can select these three and put in a triangle. And there we go. It all lines up a lot better now. Uh, and also, you could Alt H to show everything. Uh, try and play around with expanding the back part out there. A little bit if you want to play with this more. And then I went to take our dome and move it down just a smidge. 
below that. There we go. You can see the basis of how this is going to come in. This back bit is way too long here. So we're going to squish this in some. There we go. And back here we'll put some vents and some thrusters on the sides. And uh, We'll start off by adding our subdivision here as our last step. And now it's very uh, gross and lumpy. So we'll go ahead and we'll add a couple of loop cuts here to just straighten that off. Uh, we can't use the bevel modifier here. Uh, I did try with that and it just it didn't work with our jam. So then I also want a nice sharp crease. So the best way to do that on here is to mean crease it. And that just makes it nice and defined. And then right here on the front, it's just a bit bit flat and I want it to be a bit more pointy. Here. There we go. Then we just can go in and just clean up our uh, dome here some. Alright, let's get the triangle here. Uh, make sure it's overlapping into the mesh each time. And then we will make that dome. We'll just make it that uh, dummy black we created. Oop. Make everything the else. And then add a new texture. Dummy black and hit assign. And there we have the basics. You can see how this is starting to come up. Um, I want to just tweak these just a little bit. Make them perfect. Uh, so yeah, I think we'll call that it for this tutorial. So I will see you in the next one. Thank you.